The Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome. A happy Memorial Day weekend to all of you and sincere thanks to those who have served and sacrificed in the armed forces. Men's Breakfast Bible Study, sign up for that, is in the narthex. It takes place this coming Saturday. Opening hymn, 493, a hymn of glory, let us sing. <laughs>
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. It's called an ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is 
is a feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people God. Power and riches, wisdom and strength, The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O King of glory, Lord of hosts, uplifted in triumph far above all heavens, leave us not without consolation, but send us the Spirit of truth, whom you promised from the Father. For you live and reign with him in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First reading is from Acts chapter 1. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. And when they had entered, they went up to the upper room where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the zealot, and Judas the son of James. All these with one accord were devoting themselves to prayer, together with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. In those days, Peter stood up among the brothers, the company of persons was in all about 120, and said, Brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in the ministry. Now this man bought a field with the reward of his wickedness, and falling headlong, he burst open in the middle, and all his bowels gushed out. And it became known to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the field was called in their own language, a Kaldama, that is, field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, may his camp become desolate, and let there be no one to dwell in it. And let another take his office. So one of the men who had accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these men must become with us a witness to his resurrection. And they put forward two. Joseph called Barsabas, who was also called Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, You, Lord, you know who knows the, the hearts of all, show which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them. And the lot fell on Matthias. And he was numbered with the 11 apostles. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
The epistle is from Revelation chapter 22. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. Also on either side of the river, the tree of life, with its 12 kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit in each month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be anything accursed, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. And night will be no more. They will need no light of lamp, or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. And he said to me, These words are trustworthy and true. And the Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets, has sent his angel to show his servants what must soon take place. And behold, I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things, and when I heard and saw them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who showed them to me. But he said to me, You must not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers, the prophets, and with those who keep the words of this book. Worship God. And he said to me, Do not seal up the words of the prophecy of this book, for the time is near. Let the evildoer still do evil, and the filthy still be filthy, and the righteous still do right, and the holy still be holy. Behold, I am coming soon, bringing my recompense with me to repay everyone for what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they may have the right to the tree of life and that they may enter the city by the gates. Outside are the dogs and sorcerers and the sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters, everyone who loves and practices falsehood. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you about these things for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come. And let the one who hears say, come. And let the one who is thirsty, come. Let the one who desires take the water of life without price. I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues described in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God will take away his share in the tree of life and in the holy city which are described in this book. He who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I do not ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one, even as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may become perfectly one, 
so that the world may know that you sent me and loved them even as you loved me. Father, I desire that they also, whom you have given me, may be with me where I am, to see my glory that you have given me, because you loved me before the foundation of the world. O oh, righteous Father, even though the world does not know you, I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I made known to them your name, and I will continue to make it known, that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Sermon text from the psalm. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Posture affects attitude. In eighth grade confirmation, I don't let the kids cradle their heads in their hands. They have to sit up. Pre better posture improves their alertness and attentiveness. 
Posture affects attitude. In premarital counseling, I advise couples to be aware of their posture, especially when they're having disagreements. Probably isn't helpful to have your hands on your hips, leaning into your spouse's personal space. Posture affects performance. At the seminary, we had a little tennis team that played competitively with other small colleges. Our coach, Professor Jim Vells, insisted we never put discouragement on display. Don't hang your heads between points, he would say. First, it informs your opponent that you might just be ready to give up and all they have to do is keep the pressure on. And second, it erodes your own play and effort and confidence. Also before our God, posture affects attitude. As kids at the dinner table, most of us were told to fold your hands, close your eyes, bow your heads. That would probably be good advice for us still as adults rather than standing around, looking around, chewing our gum. Posture affects attitude. As we carry ourselves in the world, there's really no cause for a posture of arrogance and smugness. Psalm 51, for I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. You will never find as much sin in another, I hope, as you find in yourself. If you see a great deal in another, you only see them for a time. But you're with yourself all the time, and so you see all the sin that no one else knows about even. So before the Lord, there's no strutting or prancing, no room for swagger, just humility and gratitude and praise. Therefore, in the Bible, kneeling is an important part of worship. Our text says, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. It's an outward sign of an inward condition, humility, supplication, gratitude. Of course, we can have that humility and gratitude without the kneeling, but the posture of kneeling promotes that gratitude before God. It's not that God needs us to kneel. But we need to remind ourselves that we are his creatures, utterly dependent upon him. Imagine our God created the stars that are billions of light years away. Kneeling helps us keep perspective on just how small we are and how infinite God's love is for us, down to the last hair on our heads. You've noticed we have new kneelers here. This is the first weekend that we get to break them in. From the onset, I want to be clear, it is not necessary to kneel in order to receive Holy Communion. It's not the posture of the body, but the attitude of the soul that is important while receiving the Lord's Supper. If the heart is rightly attuned, we can receive the Lord's Supper standing up or sitting down or kneeling or lying in the hospital bed. Some of you shouldn't use these kneelers. It wouldn't be safe. Sometimes kneeling isn't safe in other ways. In the book of Daniel, King Darius established a, an ordinance that whoever prays to any other god other than him, Darius, shall be cast into the den of lions. Daniel knew about that law and felt it his duty then to defy the law. He opened his windows, got down on his knees according to his usual custom, and three times a day he gave thanks to the Lord. Of course, Daniel was ratted out and thrown into the lion's den, but God shut the mouths of the lions. They took no interest to him. To the lions, Daniel looked like one big zucchini. The next day, those who had snitched on Daniel, they weren't so fortunate, for when the king had them thrown into the den, there ensued a veritable feeding frenzy. Then, of course, there's Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who refused to get down on bended knee before the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up, and they were thrown into the blazing furnace. The Lord spared them, too. Remember how Nebuchadnezzar, peeking into the furnace, asked, were not three men sent into the fire? Why do I see four walking around unharmed and the fourth looking like a son of the gods? They opened the door, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego walked out without so much as a hair on their beards having been singed. 
Sometimes the Lord does not spare the lives of those who are faithful to him. Instead, he brings them home at the hand of their persecutors. Remember those 21 Egyptian Coptic Christians? Construction workers taken captive in Libya, 2015. Because of their Christian faith, they were lined up on the beach in orange jump shoots, suits. They were forced to kneel, and then they were beheaded. Had they renounced their faith, they might still be alive. But they did not. They were faithful to the end, and they received the crown of life. And they remain an example for the rest of us. We look around at our society, and it seems so many are not faithful to the end. They are drifting away from the Christian faith and life, kneeling before idols. It's so discouraging. Who will be left? Remember how Elijah complained to God, I have been very zealous for the Lord, but the Israelites have rejected your covenant, broken down your altars, put your prophets to death with a sword. I am the only one left. Now they're trying to kill me too. Yet God always preserves a remnant of his faithful people. He tells Elijah, I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed. The Baal. The Lord always preserves a remnant uh, from bowing down to other gods, other idols. Not even the gates of hell will prevail against God's faithful people because the Lord is preserving them. In the Bible, kneeling is what people do in the presence of God. So when the wise men saw the star, they, ex they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. That's what people do in the presence of God. Later, many ran up to Jesus, kneeling before him, begging for healing for themselves or another. Even demons knelt before him. In Mark 5, there was that man who lived among the tombs, who was tormented by demons. No one had the strength to control him or, or contain him. Yet when he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and fell down before him. The usual posture for prayer in the Bible is standing up. Kneeling to pray was assumed at emotional times. So in the Garden of Gethsemane, remember Jesus knelt as he prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. But thy will be done. Sometimes kneeling doesn't always show humility before God and submission before God's will. In Mark 15, a whole company of soldiers put a purple robe on Jesus, twisted together a crown of thorns, pressed it on him, and they called out, Hail, King of the Jews! And they struck him again and again with a, a head in the head with a staff, and they spit on him. Then they kneel, kneeled before him. Still, Jesus did what he came to do. He died on the cross for them and for us as Redeemer. Also, for when our hearts have knelt down before idols made of wood, metal, precious stones, leather, all the things that thrill our hearts in ways that should be reserved only for Jesus. And yet, he died to forgive us. And he delights to give us his body and blood. Traditionally, we kneel to receive it. In Hebrew, the word for kneeling shares the same root as that for blessing, which suggests that blessings are received here in the kneeling posture. And they surely are. It's all gift. If we could do something to earn it, we wouldn't be kneeling to receive it. Posture affects attitude. We cannot be truly humble until we know that salvation is utterly beyond our own powers, our own wisdom, our own accomplishments, our own efforts, our, our works. 
Salvation depends absolutely on his pleasure, the will and the work of Jesus Christ. That's why we kneel before the Lord, our maker, to receive his good gifts. We kneel in humility because only those who are sick know that they need a doctor. We kneel in humility because only the sheep that is lost is looked for. We kneel in humility because only the captive is freed. Only the poor man is made rich. Only the weak man is made strong. Only the humble man is exalted. We kneel in humility here at the Lord's table, if not in body, then in spirit, because only what has been emptied can be filled. So we empty ourselves of our crud and we let him fill us up with good things, with forgiveness, salvation. We kneel to receive his body and blood. The simple act of receiving Holy Communion confesses him to be your Lord and Savior. 1 Corinthians 11, for as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. You get in on the proclamation part simply by receiving the Lord's Supper as his people. Until he comes, that is, the Lord's Supper not only looks back to the cross, but forward to his return, to the last day when every knee shall bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Every knee shall bow at his name. We don't see that right now. We see many knees bowing to other names, other idols, other gods. But the promise is on the last day, every knee will bow. We will bow our knees in faith and gratitude as we've been doing all along by God's grace. Those who are not his people will also get on bended knee, not in faith, they will only be acknowledging what they can no longer deny. Jesus Christ is Lord. Until then, oh come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker, for he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Thanks be to God. Amen. Peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. We stand to confess our faith. Nicene Creed, page 6 on your bulletin. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, Begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God. Begotten, not made. Being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made. Who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father, and he will come again, the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. In our prayers, we pray for Stephanie David, who is now back in Watertown, for Bob Lippert, Chad Frenzel, Phyllis Zelmer, Bev Murray, who is in hospice care, we pray for the Wood family, Jack, Jacqueline's uh, uh, family, who are ill with COVID. And we pray for Texas, our country, and that small town in the wake of another mass shooting.
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the unity of the whole church on earth, that we, sharing the one faith in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, would bear a worthy witness to the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For many to be washed in holy baptism and brought through the gates of the heavenly city into the communion of the church, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That God would raise up faithful pastors in every age and keep our missionaries, pastors, and overseers faithful in all things, let us pray to the Lord. Lord that we may grow in the knowledge of God's word and that we may be faithful teachers of that word to our children and those not yet of the kingdom, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For a long memory to recall those who gave the full measure of devotion to our country's peace and security and served faithfully unto death in the protection of our freedom and in the defense of our land. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all who are afflicted in health, including those we've named and those whom we name in our hearts. That God would give them healing and strength according to his will, sustain them in the faith, and for Christ's sake, raise them up in glory on the last day. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For pure hearts that worthily receive the body and blood of Christ for our forgiveness, life, and salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For our nation following another mass shooting. For those who grieve, those who are injured, those who are traumatized. Let us pray to the Lord. For our leaders, that sensible changes can be made that prevent such senseless violence. Let us pray to the Lord. That we may remember the faithful who went before us and now rest from their labors and that we may follow in faith where they have led the way and at length be brought with them into Christ's everlasting light and life to see him face to face. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord All these things, whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who after his resurrection appeared openly to all his disciples and in their sight was taken up into heaven that he might make us partakers of his divine life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you've had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, and your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>